Hey guys, welcome to a special holiday edition of Fix It Friday. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about something that is a little bit different than what I normally do. So normally on this channel I do repairs and modifications of, of hardware. Um, you know, retro consoles from the very beginning of video games to the present day. However, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about um, the Famicom Disk System, which you can see right over here. So the Famicom Disk System was an add-on that was made to the uh, Famicom. That's the Japanese version of the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And a lot of Americans don't know this, but some of the, uh, the best games from the NES actually started their life on the Disk System. So, for example, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid... Um, our version of Super Mario Brothers 2, which is known as Doki Doki Panic in Japan, um, Kid Icarus, there's a ton of games that were, uh, Castlevania, yeah, so there's a lot of really good games that started their life on the disc system. So the disc system was introduced in Japan because the cost of making, you know, discs like this is pretty low. They offered save capabilities and a couple of other extra features, and so Nintendo thought that would be a good way to go. Eventually, though, they moved away from this and they went back to original cartridges, and a lot of the games that were big hits on the disc system ended up getting re-released as carts. So, um... What we're going to be doing today is talking about one of the reasons why Nintendo may have abandoned this format. And that's because it was really easy to make copies of whatever game you wanted on these things. So Nintendo had these kiosks, they were called disc writer uh, kiosks. And so you could go to them, you could take your Famicom discs, and you could pay a certain amount of money, and then you could rewrite these to a different game. So if you get tired of this game, you could pay Nintendo some money, and you could get a new game on here. Um, but it didn't take long for people to figure out how to do this on their own. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So in this particular video, we're going to go back to the late 90s, and I'm going to show you an old method by which people used to be able to write their own games onto Famicom discs. So... So basically, um, the the Famicom Disk System, it, it's a mini disc type of floppy disk, and so that's not a conventional format. I think it was made by Mitsumi, and these things are designed so that write protection is, or, or the ability to write is completely um, closed off. And so Nintendo did this by making modifications to the internal power supply inside of the Famicom Disk System, and also on the, the drive itself, there's a chip that prevents writing. Uh, so some clever people um, in the mid-90s, I think, figured out that there were ways around this. You could make modifications to the power supply and to the disk drive, and you could bypass all of that um, protection that Nintendo put in so that you could read and write disks. And so then what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using a program in DOS to, uh, to, to write um, whatever game we want to these particular disks. I picked these for a good reason. One is... Uh, is this guy over here? This is like a pachinko game, so I'm not exactly fond or I don't even really have any interest in pachinko whatsoever. But more importantly, this this disc doesn't work at all, so it, it will not work in any Famicom uh, disc system. It throws up errors, so it has some kind of corruption. I'm hoping that I can write something on it and actually make it usable, because right now you can't even use it. This game over here, this is a billiards game, so again, it's, you know, not that interesting. It's a Konami game, so that's cool, but it's all in Japanese. I do not speak Japanese, so I can't really play this game or enjoy it. So I'm going to see if I can turn these into things I do enjoy, like The Legend of Zelda, perhaps, or, or maybe Castlevania. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but um, I'll, I'll go through that with you guys. And so, so what we're going to do today is first I'm going to show you how this crazy con contraption is all set up. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to rewrite some Famicom Disk System games. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is just talk about how everything is wired up. So we've got our Famicom Disk System. This is wired up in the normal way, um, but you'll notice that there are some modifications. So this Famicom was modified in Japan to have um, composite video out. So this was not something that I did. This was something that was purchased this way. So it has composite video and mono sound coming out here and it goes straight to this TV here. And so we're going to be using this TV um, as part of the writing process. And as I mentioned before, the disk system has two different types of modifications. It has a power supply modification and it also has a disk drive modification. Um, I'm not going to open them up and show them because I think those are very outdated methods and I don't want to confuse people. And you know, this is, this is historical. I'm, I'm kind of trying just to chronicle something that people used to do here in this video. So, so yeah, this, this drive is modified um, with both the power supply and the disk drive. So then there's some other tools that we have here. So we have this 
really bizarre uh, contraption here. And so what we've got on one side is we've got a parallel port, and this parallel port is going to fit into the uh, back end of the, of the Windows 98 laptop that we have over here. And then on the other end of this ridiculous cable is a uh, port from a Super Nintendo. It looks like someone took the port of a Super Nintendo and, and soldered that into the other side. Then there's a whole bunch of cables connecting the two, and it's all cemented in place with, with uh, hot glue, which is, you know, it's kind of a disaster. But it, but it does work, so I can say, you know, it looks horrible, but it works. This is not how I would have done it, but nevertheless, it works. Um, so the, the pinout here for this, uh, this port is very comparable to this RAM expansion cartridge here. So this RAM expansion cartridge is part of the Famicom disk system, and it has a little cable that goes from the, from the Famicom, uh, to this, to this cart, and then this cart, of course, goes into, uh, the Famicom. So the, the cable on this end will fit into a Super Nintendo, um, port like this. And so, like, like I said, the, the pins here have been repurposed and they're connected up to this parallel port. And the parallel is going to go into the computer. So if I just kind of bend this over back here, we've got a nice little parallel port back here. So I'm going to plug this guy in. Um, you're probably not going to see too much of it in the video, um, but I'm going to put this in here and that's going to be for the, uh, the computer. Now, the computer uh, is a Windows 98 machine. Uh, so, so to do this, if you want to try to do this yourself, you need like a Windows 95 or a 98 machine, and this one is a Windows 98 machine. Um, but I'm not even going to be using Windows, I'm just going to be using DOS uh, to, to run this program. Uh, the last things here are just a couple of other things. So, so this laptop is kind of broken, so the, the keyboard doesn't work anymore, so because it thankfully has USB, uh, I can use this USB keyboard and type in commands, so that is very fortunate. Um, I didn't want to have to fix this laptop. It's terrible. Um, I just need it to <laughs> copy Famicom games, and that's it. Uh, the last thing you'll see here, which is kind of uh, cool, is I have a USB uh, floppy disk drive. These are extremely useful for lots of things, not just for this particular project here. You can actually connect this up to a Windows 10 machine, and it will be detected. So I can use this to take uh, ROMs of Famicom games, put them onto a floppy, and then transfer them over to uh, to this computer over here. So that's what I did. I took a couple games and I, I, I moved them over to uh, to this laptop here. And then finally, we have this special disk. And this disk has two bits of homebrew software on it. It has something called Disk Keeper, and uh, this is Disk Checker. I think Disk Checker is something you can use to actually dump your own games, which is really cool. Disk Keeper is something that you can use to rewrite um, to rewrite games. So this is something that we're going to be using. All right, so now that I've explained all of this, we're going to go ahead and start the process of rewriting these disks. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power on the Famicom, and we're going to load this disk keeper, so on side A of this particular disk. Okay, and so this homebrew program called Disk Keeper um, loads up, and and so what it's going to do is it's going to say, please set game disk. And so what this means is that we're going to um, go ahead and go into DOS, and we're going to kind of start this process of loading the Zelda ROM into the RAM cartridge. And then once a portion of it is loaded, then we're going to write that portion onto the disk uh, onto the onto the disk that we're interested in. So to do that, we're going to go ahead, we're going to come back here, we're going to eject the disk keeper. So the disk keeper's contents are now stored in the RAM, so we don't actually need it anymore. And we also don't want to run the risk of overwriting it, so we're just going to leave it off to the side here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the RAM expansion cartridge um, cable out. I'm going to connect it up to this bizarre adapter here. I'm going to do that with my two hands and not with, um, not like this. And um, we also have to load a program in DOS. So I'm gonna do that really quick. It's called FDS Loader. And then I type in my game, zelda.fds. Okay, 
So this kind of status screen comes up, and so this bar here indicates side A of Zelda. This large bar over here indicates side B of Zelda, so it actually tells me most of the game is on side B. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug in the, uh, the cable from the RAM expander into that little adapter. So I'm going to do that right now. Oh, not quite in. This thing is really janky. <laughs> okay, so you can see there's a progress bar that, that went green, and it just kind of filled this whole area here. Once that's done, the Famicom will change. It'll say, please set blank. What this means is, now I need to insert the disk that I want to overwrite. So I'm going to take the uh, Pachinko game. I'm going to take the Pachinko game, and we're going to put it into the Famicom right here. And now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, take the cable and plug it back into the Famicom disk system, and it's going to take that data and feed it into the disk. Okay. And so now if I go over to the disk, you can actually see the status light. So it's in the process of writing half of side A to the disk. Okay. And actually now it says, I don't know if you can read it here, it says end. So I believe that means that all of side A is finished. So now let's go ahead and just power cycle the Famicom. And I'll just put you on the screen here because the relevant stuff is going to be shown here. Let's see if it shows Zelda now. I hope so. So this disc didn't even read before. And look at that. Now we have Zelda. That is so cool. So I've now taken this disc that was trashed and wasn't even working, and now I can get it to at least play a game. And it's a good game. It's an awesome game. I don't need to know Japanese to play this game. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and write side B, because as it is right now, it just has side A. So if I try to actually play the game, if I you know flip to side B, it's going to give me some kind of error. So now let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing to side B. Okay, so to do side B, what we're going to do is we actually have to um, reload the program, which is what I did. So I hit the escape key to get out of the program, and then I just retyped the command in DOS to go back in. And so now um, what I need to do is I need to tell the program that we're going to be writing to side B instead of side A. So to do that, I'm going to press the number 2. And you see how now the, uh, the color changed, so this kind of like patterned blue is now on side B instead of side A. So, so that means we're ready to do side B. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I've, I've turned on the, uh, the Disk Keeper program. You can see it's saying, please set game disk. It's asking me to uh, attach the cable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but it's not going to start right away. I, I have to wait, and then as soon as the cable's connected, I'm going to hit the space bar, and then it's going to write. And if I'm lucky, it will work. <laughs> Okay, so now the, the cable is inserted, so now I'm going to hit spacebar and it's going to start. Okay, cool. It worked. That's awesome. Alright, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to eject the disk keeper. Now I'm going to take my, my game and I'm going to put side B in, facing upwards, and I'm going to transfer the cable back to the Famicom disk system. So now, just like before, the status light is running. So it's writing at least half of the data to the disk. If it doesn't say end, actually it does not. So if you go back to the, the screen here, you see how it says, please set game disk? That means it's not finished yet. It has more data to write to side B. So we're going to go ahead, basically, and repeat the process. So I'm going to hit escape again, go back into the program, hit number two, so that I'm on side B again. And then we're going to do the cable transfer, just like before.
Okay, so now we're ready. And I didn't bother taking the disc out. It's still in there on side B, ready to go. So now I'm going to eject this, put it back into the Famicom disc system, and hopefully we will have The Legend of Zelda on a previously dead uh, disc. Okay, so that should be the end of it, and at least according to the program it worked, it says end, so let's go ahead and power cycle the game and see if it works. Okay, so I've got the Famicom rebooted, here's my game, which hopefully is Zelda now. Let's go ahead and pop it in and see what happens. Okay, so this is good. We knew that this was working. So let's go ahead and flip it to side B and see if we get the load screen for Zelda now. Let's see. Awesome. Ha! <laughs> there it is. So we've got the game. Somehow, I guess because this was a dump of somebody else's cartridge, we actually have a game that was in progress. That's really cool. So it not only saves the ROM itself, but it also saves whatever battery, you know, whatever whatever memory was currently in the disc. So this was actually somebody's game of Zelda that got backed up for posterity. So let's see if it works. Wow, that's cool. Okay. So so yeah, I wanted to go through this whole process because, um, you know, this is a really cool old method that people used to use to uh, make their own copies of Famicom sy Disk System games. Um, you could do this with licensed games, you could do this with pirated games, and, you know, in the end, Nintendo really didn't have a way to stop this, and I think that was one of the real reasons why they abandoned the uh, the Famicom Disk System. You know, the, the, the ease with which people could pirate was one of the biggest problems um, with the console, and so in the end, they, I'm sorry, not with the console, with, with the uh, the disc system, so in the end, they, they went back to cartridges. Another reason why they went back to cartridges is because advancements in the development of cartridges made it so that you could do a lot of the really cool things, um, like saving, for example, and, you know, there were, there were um, uh, additional chips that were added to the cartridges that gave you things like multi-directional scrolling, um, extra sound channels, all sorts of stuff like that. And so, in the end, this kind of became unnecessary, and the piracy threat was a big problem. Uh, whereas, it was a lot harder to pirate cartridges, and so, so Nintendo, you know, really wanted to get back into that format instead. And so, they kind of just let this product go. So, anyhow, yeah, I hope this was interesting to you. This is a little bit of history of... Um, of how, you know, people used to, you know, make copies of their own of, of Famicom Disk System games. Um, and so, yeah, this was just kind of like a special episode. Normally, you know, the content I would do is is focused on repairs and mods. But, um, you know, if you guys like this kind of stuff too, just let me know in the comments. It would be really great to hear about it. And uh, maybe I'll do some more videos like this in the future. All right, guys. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all of your support this year. It's been phenomenal. Um, and, and again, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!